Welcome. In this short video, we're going to show you how to import an Ancestry family tree into RootsMagic. A lot of users have a family tree up on Ancestry, but don't have any idea how to get that data into their RootsMagic program, and so we're going to show you how to do that. Now keep in mind, the Ancestry website may change the layout a little bit here and there, but the general principles that we're going to show you will remain the same. You may just have to hunt around the screen a little bit more. So the first thing I want to do is this tree right here, this Busby family tree on Ancestry is the one I want to bring into Roots Magic. So I'm going to go down here and say, go to that tree. And now this tree, it's just a tiny little tree that I've created here. It only has three people in it. And it doesn't really matter whether I have a tree with three people or 10,000 people. Everything I'm showing you is going to work exactly the same. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and click on one of the people, Levi, right here, and I'm going to view his profile. And you'll see I have basic information on him. I have birth, marriage, death, residence, burial. I have all this kind of information. And most of these pieces of information have some sources. For example, on the death, I have Confederate pensions and a find a grave index. And so I just want to go ahead and go back to the tree now. And when I'm on the tree page, you're going to see a little menu right here to the right of the of the tree name. And when I click on that, there's going to be an option called tree settings. And that's the one I want because that's where I'm going to be able to download this tree to a file that I can import into Roots Magic. So I'm going to go ahead and click on that. And there's information like the tree name and whether it's a private or a public tree. And again, it doesn't really matter whether it's private or public. Most of these options, it's not going to make a difference when you do the import. You're going to do this exactly the same way. What you want is this area right here, manage your tree. And you're going to have the option to export your tree as a GEDCOM file. So I'm going to go ahead and say export tree. And it starts generating the GEDCOM file. Now that went fairly quickly because I only have three people in my in my tree. Uh, if I had 10,000 names in the tree, that can take a while. So you just wait until it's finished. And once it's finished, the button will change to download your GEDCOM file. And so when I go ahead and click on download the GEDCOM file, it's going to start downloading that file right here. Now it depends on what browser you're using as how this really works. If you're using Chrome like I am, it's going to download it and put the button down here on the status bar. And you can click and say show in the folder so you can see where it saved it. On the other hand, if, it's, if you used Explorer or Firefox, it's going to do the download a little bit differently. And so you do need to figure out where it is that it downloaded the file. In this case, I know it happened to download this file into my documents folder. Okay, that's actually all I really need to do with Ancestry. So I'm going to go ahead and close out Ancestry uh, and the browser, and I'm going to go to my Roots Magic program. And now what I want to do is import that file that I just created. And the way I'm going to do that is I'm going to go here to File, the File menu, and I'm going to come down here to Import. Now you'll notice that I don't have a database created right now you will want to actually import this into a new blank database. Even if you've already got your data in Roots Magic, don't import that file into your existing Roots Magic file. It'll just cause you grief and you'll have all those names mixed in with your, your actual full pristine database. So go ahead and I'm going to go ahead and click on import here. And it's going to ask me what genealogy program does this file come from? And I'm going to say that it's a GEDCOM file. Now, if I don't happen to know where that GEDCOM file is that I just created, I can click search for files and Roots Magic's going to search my hard drive until it finds all the GEDCOM files and I can select the one that I just created. In this case, I do know that that file was in my documents folder and there it is right there. And so I'm going to, or in my downloads folder. So I'm going to go ahead and highlight that and I'm going to click, click on open and Roots Magic is going to say, okay, we need to create a new file to put this in. And I'm just going to call it from ancestry, but you can call it whatever you want. Select whatever options you want, click okay. 
And then right here I can just say, okay, I don't need to add that additional information. And there we go. This is the data that I had up on Ancestry, and it's now in Roots Magic. If I go and look at Levi Samuel Busby, just like I did before, all of that information came in. His name, his spouse, uh, there's his birth, marriage, death, residence, and burial information, along with the sources for each of those pieces of information. So, for example, that death that we had two sources for, if I click on that, there they are the Alabama, Texas, and Virginia Confederate pensions, and there's the footnote for that, and also the find a grave. So not only is it pulling in the names, dates, places, uh, that type of information, but it's also bringing in the source citations. Now it's not going to bring in the images. Ancestry does not download those images in that GEDCOM file. If you do want those images, you need to bring those down yourself and then link them in. And there we have another short video that shows you how to add pictures. And so you'll notice right here though, we have a little problem uh, indicators for these people. If I go click on the little problem indicator, you're going to see it says residence after death. And if I double click to bring that up, you'll see right here that I do have the death and I have the residence. That's because in Ancestry, when I had added this, uh, this Confederate pensions, it put the residence. This was actually the date that that pension uh, application was, was created. And it created a residence fact. Ancestry actually added a residence fact for that pension, even though it was the wife that actually filed the pension. And so that's why you have that. And so uh, the, little, the little problem indicators can give you an idea that there's uh, information, there's sources uh, that have information, but maybe were applied to the wrong fact. Anyways, so that is how you can import data, a family tree from Ancestry into Roots Magic.